Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to help you remove all of that frustration of buying a new chain for your chainsaw by giving you the information to buy the correct one every time. Okay, so ordering a new chain isn't that simple. There is many things to consider. It's not just a case of measuring the size of your bar and giving the make and model of your chainsaw and then expecting to get the right chain when you ring a supplier. So for example, if you rang up and said, I've got a still MS170 with a 15 inch bar, can I have a chain please? Unfortunately, that type of information may May not be enough. So first of all, let's have a look at why giving the bar length may not be the right information. So for instance, just taking a look at these drawings of these two chainsaws, even though the bar lengths are identical, they both have different width measurements. So one is wider than the other. And so with this one being thicker, it would require a longer chain with more drive links than this one. And so in my opinion, in a small number of cases, you may just be able to give the supplier the length of the bar and they may well give you the right chain. But because there's such a different variety of bars available for a particular chainsaw, different lengths, different widths and different styles, it's almost impossible for a supplier to know exactly what bar is on your chainsaw. It may be a different bar altogether than the bar that was on the chainsaw from when it was new. So even if they look up the records for your type of chainsaw from when it was new and what bar was on there it might be different now it might have had a different bar fitted at some stage and that might be wider or thinner even if it's the same length as the length of the bar originally fitted to your chainsaw and if you've purchased a second-hand chainsaw the likelihood is you may not know what bar's been fitted in the past. So from that, we can now at least understand that when calling a supplier and telling them that you've got a 15 inch bar, that it's not that simple for them to know what size chain you actually need. And this is why ordering chainsaw chain can be so frustrating for the customer and the supplier. So let me tell you what information you'll need to give them and where to find it on your chainsaw. To help you get your chain quicker and help the supplier to know which chain you need, the very best thing you can do is to look at the chain chain and the bar. Because somewhere on the bar and chain, you'll have three pieces of important information. These are the pitch, the gauge, and the links of the chain. And usually, the best way to get that information is to remove the bar. And when we do, generally, we see some numbers towards the end of the bar. There, there should be a pitch size, and commonly, one of these four sizes. So on the bar, it should say either quarter, three eighths, point three two five, or point four o four. And if we take a look at this particular bar, we can see 3 eighths stamped to it there. So there's our first important piece of information, 3 eighths. This is the pitch size and it needs to be written down because it's one of the numbers you'll need to quote to the supplier. But remember, it could be any of these four sizes and you need to record which one. But if we want to gain some true knowledge here and gather an understanding, what actually is the pitch size? What does it mean? Well, if we take any given rivet on a chain, it's the distance between this one and the third consecutive one along divided by two. So let's say the distance between these two points is three quarters of an inch. And so the pitch is simply three quarters of an inch divided by two equals three eighths of an inch. So this is a three eighths pitch. Now remember, the chances are you haven't got to measure this yourself or do any math. The likelihood is that the pitch size is already stamped to the bar. All I'm doing here is simply explaining what the pitch is. And so with that, we've got our first piece of important information. And what do we need next? Well, we now need the gauge size. Well, the gauge size is the width of the chain's drive links. So to explain, I'll turn this chain upside down and then bring it in closer and so this is a drive link and it's the width of this drive link that's the gauge size. Basically it's the part of the chain that runs down the groove of the bar so it's got to be the right size for the groove. Again usually stamped to the side of the bar the gauge size can be any one of the four following measurements and they are 0 0.043 of an inch, 0 0.050, 0 0.058 or 0 0.063. Now these numbers, as well as the being stamped on the bar as imperial, so in inches, they're also sometimes stamped on there in millimeters, so metric as well. So if you see the gauge size stamped to the bar, whether it's an imperial or it's metric equivalent, you need to make a note of this. And taking a look at our bar, we can see we've got 0 0.050. So that's listed down as another important piece of information. But this particular bar isn't just giving us the imperial measurement. It's also giving us the metric equivalent, the one 1.3 millimeters. This particular bar is very descriptive and has real good information, but unfortunately not all bar manufacturers are this good at giving out information. In fact, there's a little symbol there representing the groove in the bar. So the manufacturer has gone a long way to make it unmistakable that this is the gauge size. So the third and final important piece of information we now need to make a record of relates to the drive links. 
And the drive links on the chain are these appendages that stick downwards away from the cutting teeth. And ideally every one of these must be counted to be unmistakable in getting the right length of chain. And there may well be times where you'll need to count the number of drive links on the chain. But again, usually the amount you need is stamped to the side of the bar. And looking at our bar, it's 72. And again, the manufacturer of this bar being very descriptive, there's a diagram next to it of a drive link making it clear that this number means 72 drive drive links is needed for the chain to fit this bar. But I have come across many bars that only have the number and it's quite confusing as to whether this is relating to the drive links or not. And so in situations like this that's why I always make a habit of counting the drive links as well. But you may not need to do this, it may just be listed there and to help decipher whether it is the drive link number or not, depending on the brand of bar, so the manufacturer, I've seen it listed as some of the following. So let's just keep the example of the drive link number being 72. As we've already seen it may well be indicated that it's a drive link number by having a symbol of a drive link in front of it like this. So you know for definite that this is the drive link number. And other ways I've seen it listed is having the drive link number then followed by DL of course meaning drive link. And another way I've seen it listed in the past but not so common is the drive link number followed by E. So here we now have our three important pieces of information. If ever we need a chain for our chainsaw and we take these three pieces of information to the supplier then the chances are they'll know exactly what chain you need for your chainsaw and you'll get it in the quickest time possible. So what happens if the information on the bar is limited or there's no information? Well in this instance if providing the make, the model and the bar length of your chainsaw hasn't provided your supplier with much confidence then what we need to do next is look at the chain itself. If there's a brand name stamped onto the chain or a number on the drive links or both then you need to tell these to the supplier. You may still be asked to provide the number of drive links you need though so you may still need to count. So I really hope that that helps you get the chain you need as and when you need it and I also hope that it's given you some in-depth knowledge about why suppliers ask for certain information. And if you take a look in the description below there's a link there to my website where there's a free download summarizing the information in this video. Once you've downloaded it, you can print it off and study it at your own pace, take it into the workshop, whatever you need to do. And so if this video has helped you get your chain a lot quicker and a lot simpler, then this video was worthwhile. And I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon.